Hey GearFacts friends, today I'm looking at the Behringer LX210. The 2 is because it has two speakers and the 1 zero is because each speaker is 10 inches. This one is a really versatile and really interesting and engaging amp. For me at least I find it brings out a lot of creativity so I'll show you some sounds from it and then we'll do some editing. <laughs> Incidentally, the speakers do real stereo too. You won't pick that up on the video feed, of course, but it's nice to know that it does work and you can extend out to an external cabinet to widen that stereo image. That's not a bad sound to begin our editing on actually, it's just a clean sound with a whole lot of delay on it. This dial controls our effects and that includes delay as well as the modulation effects. Each one has two parameters, both of which are controlled by this dial right here. Reverb is completely separate. Over here we've got all our amp models. The more familiar amp controls here, gain and volume, bass, mid and treble. And up here we've got five banks that we can save in, but there are 25 banks giving us a total of 125 patches that we can save. Okay, for the moment I'm just going to turn the delay down so that all we've got is this. Just a nice, neat, clean sound. As you can see, our LED here is on clean V-amp, and as we change through patches, that LED will move to different spots based on how we've set the amp for those particular presets. I would draw your attention to the treble control. You may not quite be able to see it, but underneath presence is written in grey. Quite hard to see, but anything written in grey is accessed by holding down the tap button here and you'll see you've got in grey second parameter. So it basically works like a shift key. Hold down tap and turn this dial and you'll be controlling presence. But let's move on to amps for the moment. It looks like we've got about 25 to choose from. I shouldn't say amps, some of them are just pedal models or just general things that Behringer have come up with on their own to define your overall sound. So let's just run through a few. Just takes a little moment to switch between them. clean again. So that's taken us around the whole circle of amp profiles there. If we hold down that second parameter though, we can get the ones written in grey underneath. So a whole new range of sounds. So that was a very quick run through the sounds and you might have thought to yourself, well some of those sounded pretty lifeless and you're right, some of them are quite muddy and boring, but some of them really shine. This one I've just landed on for example. 
I think that's definitely a good starting point for a nice sound. And I will say in defense of the ones that came through a little bit more muddy too, they do respond very well to the equalizer. I don't think we need any more gain. While we're at this camera angle though, I'll just show you that the way we enter edit mode is by pressing these two buttons here together. Again, look at the grey text and the bracket lines between the two buttons will, in their own cryptic way, give you an idea of what to do. So press both together to enter edit mode. And again, looking for grey writing, you can see underneath the preset buttons here, we've got MIDI control, drive, cabinets, reverb, and noise gate. The first one I go to is noise gate every time because I have noisy electrics in my house and I can see that noise gate is set to 6. 0 is minimum, 15 is maximum and again cryptically you don't turn a dial to change that value there, you use the bank up and bank down buttons. Sounds crazy I know. Anyway listen to the noise carefully as I lower the noise reduction. Okay so I find, at least in this environment, that pretty close to 15 is generally where you want to be. And it's a good noise reducer too, it doesn't let noise creep in as the chords decay. And the exact same methodology applies to the other parameters I mentioned a moment ago. For example, we can choose different reverb. We're on number 3 here. Let's turn the reverb control right up so we can hear what's going on. Oh, that's too high. So nine different reverbs, and some of them are pretty intense. They're all quite different too, so... It's pretty well equipped in the reverb section. Let's try one a bit more subtle. Yeah, that's quite nice. Cabinets now. And again, same methodology. Just run through the numbers until you find a cabinet that you like. I think number four was pretty good. Won't make my playing any better, but that was my favorite cabinet there. Parameter B is drive. Now I'll have to read a little bit more in the manual about this because it's just zero or one. I think it's just acting like an auto boost kind of effect. For the moment I'll leave it off. This amp does have MIDI control in the back and I'll show you the back panel shortly but if you switch to MIDI you can change your MIDI channels there and bring in control externally from some other MIDI device. I know I haven't shown you the modulation and ambience effects just yet but we're going to change the camera angle in a moment and we'll check them out. First of all, while we're on this angle, I just want to show you how to save the patch that we've created. You press exit to get out of edit mode and you'll see that everything starts flashing again. This is patch A which was the one that we were on and it's flashing now and what the flashing is telling us is that we have made changes and if we move away to another patch we're going to lose them. So we've got to save them and the way we do that is hold down A until it stops flashing. Now everything's locked in. One final thing while we're on this camera angle, you can press tuner. That's just a one touch thing. And you're straight into a simple but very effective tuner. Okay, so just exiting out of that tuner now, let's look at these modulation effects. It's pretty similar to the amp modeling selector. You just turn your dial until you find something that you like. The compressor is really good. It really tightens up your volume and pumps up the sound. And there's a handy combination of compressor and chorus.
Me personally, I just like the compressor on its own. Other combinations include chorus and delay, flanger and delay. You might notice that the delay part of it isn't showing up much there, so first of all what we want to do is maybe set a slower tempo just by pressing the tap. And then by holding down tap we get that second parameter control as well. So hold this one down, turn this. And the second parameter is controlling the amount of flange. So we've got more effects in our chain now, but slightly less control over them because of this very simplified operating system. Anyway, let's try a few others. Phaser and delay. Up here we've just got our delay effects by themselves. And again, some of them take advantage of the two-speaker stereo system. This is the rotary effect, which I find pretty agreeable. Again, tempo control makes a difference. First parameter. And our second parameter. You might hear a bit of speaker rattle there because it's coming through pretty loud. Then we got tremolo. Okay, so that's the editing system on the LX210. Like I said, it certainly doesn't come naturally and the functions don't seem overly obvious, but if you pay attention to that grey writing and to that second function button, everything should be pretty accessible to you. The back panel is pretty cool. I won't patronise you by reading out the labels above all of these sockets because it's all very obvious. Over here though, we've got the MIDI in and out sockets which are very interesting to me. I don't have a MIDI pedal but one is on the way and I will be doing a video about MIDI control over this amp. And of course the two 10 inch speakers which sound really good. Bigera is the brand presumably poached from Behringer's more expensive range of Bigera amps. So that's my demo of the Behringer LX210 guys. To be honest I did make a video about this one a couple of years back but I just ran through a few of the sounds. I wanted to go through it again in a bit more detail for you and a video will be coming up with an exploration of MIDI control over this amp so stay tuned for that one. In the meantime here are some links to some other things that might interest you including those old reviews of the Behringer LX series. Thanks for liking, commenting or subscribing. Please share with your friends who are interested in amps or other gear facts gear and I look forward to seeing you very soon.